buy your mutant. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. Biomutant is an open-world, post-apocalyptic, kung-fu, fable role-playing game <laughs> with a unique martial arts-styled combat system allowing you to mix melee, shooting and mutant ability action. First up guys, we'll have a look at the old graphicals, the, the graphical options. Uh, there's a lot of options here actually, there's key mapping options, there's uh, graphics options. Now the key mapping uh, wouldn't allow me to bind every single key, so just a heads up on that. Graphical options, there's a few things there that you can tweak and tweak with uh, to get the right frame rate for, for your uh, computer system. It ran great for me other than a few frame drops now and then. It wasn't plagued with frame drops but I certainly had a few on my time with the game. Uh, I don't know what my time with the game is uh, to be honest with you. I have completed it and you do get a game mode plus at the end where you keep all your shit and you start again having to unite the tribes right from the beginning with a clean map. But anyway, what's the game about? Well, it's after the apocalypse kind of thing and you play a little rodent face, uh, whatever the hell it is. And basically there's the, the tree of life which holds the world together has been eaten away by four world eaters on its four roots that span north, south, east and west. And you have to kill the world eaters. They're the big bosses in this game. There's also a story about where you came from. Uh, you find out your mother was killed right at the beginning. It's not a spoiler. It's the opening kind of scene of the game um, by this giant, horrible freak. And he's also a boss in this game as well. So there's five bosses uh, and there's a lot of mini bosses in this game that you have to fight. The graphics and the world look fantastic. It's bright, vibrant, colorful, and filled with lots of different biomes. There's like pink ones, green ones, there's um, a frozen one, there's a heat one. And essentially, these four areas will kill you very quickly if you aren't immune to the effects in them particular biomes. Now you can buff your immunity to these biomes by two means. Firstly, crafting gear, that has a natural immunity to the specific biome, or you can find in the world or loot them off creatures that you kill, uh, little biome points that you can put into uh, your own immunity resistance to these. So there's different ways that you can prep yourself for going into these other biomes. These, these don't make up very big parts of the world. The vast majority of the world you can just go around where, wherever you want. It's total open world. There's no restrictions on where you can and can't go. It's a big open world map. Uh, so just basically areas are different biomes in the map. Now the story's narrated by the guy who did the Stanley Parable. I forget his name, but uh, I think he does a really good job. The language in this is kind of kiddified the language. In fact, I'll come to the kiddification of the game in a second, but it, it is kind of childish. Uh, the, the the writing and I get it because I'm a child no I, I get it because the the guy who's narrating is, the, is this little bug he's playing the part of a little bug who's kind of translating everything for you and he doesn't know the language perfectly so the 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 way that it's translated is kind of different to what the actual uh, writing is he's a, he's a clip to give you an idea goop says gizmos devised a cannon for the goo glide but instead of bullets it flips quacks squeaky distractions for the triple attentive porky puff which will give you time to get yourself in position the best way to find quacks is to talk to gulp he has the bearings of the surfipelago and knows where the quacks like to float and the way everything's named is, is a bit different. I mean, you're, you're fighting for puffs, essentially. And there's the um, fatty puff. No, flabby puff. No, puffy puff. Porky puff. After. I don't know what the puffs are called. But there's four puffs and you've got to take them down. And, and that's kind of the main thing in the game. Now, obviously, they're the ones that's eaten the world. And so they're pretty much the main focus of the game. They're the four bosses that you have to take down. Now there's tribes that's been scattered around the land that are no longer friends with each other. There's three nice kind of good tribes and three not so good tribes. And you decide which ones you want to help. You can be a bastard or you can be a nice guy. I went through as a nice guy and regretted it big time, but I'd gone so far into the game. It was in the last couple of hours that I tried to go and be a bastard. Um, 
because you get I think the bastards get more Darth Vader kind of things where you can pick people up and throw them around I like that ability so if I had me time to do it again I would definitely go dark and you can choose this by the RPG elements in the game where you're talking to different people you have to make decisions you can either be nice to them or be a bastard and essentially you've got to pick four of them to come with you on this arc to get off the planet before the next big cataclysm happens or you can be a complete bastard and say the lot of you is none of you little pricks are coming with me i'm going by myself and i like that in games it gives you decisions it, it does change the way the story goes um but it's not decisive but it does change quite a bit i want to do a shout out to the different monsters in this game because there's tons of them absolutely loads of different beasties uh, that you'll come across in this game i mean the portfolio must be huge of different monsters that you actually fight uh, that you just find randomly around the world. Exploring this map is a joy because there's lots of different areas that you go into. You have to use um, a little boat thing that you craft, uh, like a little jet skier, I guess. Uh, you, you have to use that. There's, there's different world mounts. There's a hand. I've got various different animal mounts that you get, and you get a submarine as well later on, which you use for the final um, world eater. But the exploration is definitely the strongest point of this of this game. It's just fun wandering around the world discovering new people new places new mobs and, and stuff like that where the game kind of falls for me is there's far too much loot lots of it is just pointless in fact i stopped looting anything that didn't glow as top-notch loot by the end of the game i mean i was just ignoring all the trash you know if the if the crate that you were going to loot didn't glow yellow i wasn't interested in it because I, I just had so much of it that it just became pointless because you were every half hour you were having to search through it all finding out the bits that you want disassembling the stuff you don't for parts so you can craft because you can craft all kinds of shit in this melee clothes and ranged weapons and there's shotguns pistols machine guns sniper rifles clubs there's one-handed there's two-handed there's swords there's you name it you can craft it in this and you can carry a melee and ranged weapons at the same time and you can just switch using if you're using a mouse and keyboard left mouse button fires your guns right mouse button is your your whirling of your blades in melee combat and there's pretty much unlockable combos for every single weapon in the game and certain combos allow you to fill up a meter which requires three marks and it's your Wu Fu meter or something. And when you activate that, it does a lot more damage and has special moves and so on and so forth. So that's how the combat plays out. Now, the problem with it is it gets very, very repetitive and extremely easy. I crafted dual uh, pistols uh, with some really good loot. And I kept them the entire game, from mid-game to the end game. I pretty much kept, I think I upgraded a few bits on them once, but essentially they were the same guns, and they would just melt everything. So it is a little bit unbalanced. Uh, but when I think about this, you know, the amount of weapons, the fact that it's melee and ranged, and the sheer amount of monsters in this game, balancing this is probably impossible. You're just going to have to. Have a go at it the best you can and then leave it because I just don't think you could I don't think it's possible to balance this game. So it is what it is in that sense. There's also puzzles that you get quite often in this game, and they are even easier than the puzzles in Resident Evil 8. Yes. We are talking bottom of the bottom draw here, guys. Um if you fail at any of these puzzles in this game as an adult, you have my deepest sympathy. And so that's essentially what the game is. You're running around the world, you're talking to all the different people. There's 75 hours worth of uh, content here. And I did a lot of the side quests as well, but I think when I completed the game, I'd only done 50% of the game or something. So there's, there's about 70 odd hours worth of game uh, here to be played. Um, the question is, should you play it? And if you're anything like me, the answer to that is no, you shouldn't. But I'm thumbing it up and I'm gonna tell you why I'm thumbing it up because there's not many games like this out there. There's hardly any. This game is absolutely suitable for children. Now when I say children, I mean young teenagers. If my son was 12 years old, I'd be straight out to buy him this because this is the kind of game that 12, 13 year old kids, well, they're gonna lap this up. They're gonna be easy boss fights, easy loot, easy customization, lovely, bright, sparkly world to explore, lots of adventures for them to do. 
easy kind of combat. Nothing in this game is, is hard. Even climbing a cliff, just look for yellow paint and push forward. Anybody can play this game. It is absolutely accessible to all people. And, you know, most of the games that I review are not suitable for children. They're either too hard or too depraved and brutal. This just isn't. And the more I played it, the more I could just see, you know, there's hardly any games like this. This game is quite unique. I mean, we used to have Ratchet and Clank or Kango and Suzuki or Suzuki. Well, I don't know what the f You know, we used to have all that. I mean, I remember buying them for my son on his PlayStation, no, sorry, on his uh, Xbox 360. And he, and he lapped them up. And this is kind of in that same kind of style. It isn't Dark Souls, but I don't think it's trying to be either. It's just a very casual, easy game. And as much as that doesn't appeal to me at all, and I certainly wouldn't buy it or play it, I can think of a lot of people that would. And you know what? I said it's, I think it's for kids, but I can also see why some adults would want to play a completely chilled out Zen experience game where you've had a hard day and you just, you can't be arsed with boss fights where if you sneeze, you have to do it all again. You know, if you just want a casual, casual experience, hey, have at it, guys. So there you go. You might not like what I had to say, but that's what I got from playing this game. See you in the next review.